Before this video starts, there is a trigger word warning. A trigger word is essentially something that brings up a past trauma and this can cause someone to feel sad. They can have anxiety or panic. It can also bring up flashbacks, so be careful of that. And this is a quick warning of that. Mental illnesses are a disorder of brain functions which affect how a person thinks, behaves and interacts with other people. Most common time for mental illness to occur is late teen to early 20s. At this time in their lives, most young people are in secondary or tertiary study which leads to the question of how mental illness affects people in their study. Mental illnesses are a disorder of brain functions which affect how a person thinks, behaves and interacts with other people. Mental illnesses may occur when strong feelings of tension, fear or sadness become so incredibly disturbing and overwhelming that a person has trouble coping with their everyday lives and activities. This isn't the only way that mental illness can occur with them also arising through genetic vulnerability and stresses. Mental illnesses ca can cause anxiety, panic attacks, a limited attention span, fluctuating motion, and disorganization. They can also cause physical effects like rises in temperatures, sweaty palms, difficulty breathing, and heart palpitations. People that have extreme mental illnesses will sometimes have strong urges not to do anything, things like getting out of bed or even caring for themselves. There are a myriad of mental illnesses, with some of the more common mental illnesses being anxiety, substance use disorder, and depressive disorders including depression. Some of the major mental illnesses are depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar mood disorder, personality disorders, and eating disorders. For students, mental illnesses can reduce their quality of life and achievements, while also affecting relationships that they have both with family and friends. It reduces concentration, dependability and their mental abilities and can also interfere with their studies. Some of the sources agree around the age that they arise, saying late teens and early 20s, begin around the ages between 18 and 24, one narrows it down to 14 and 3 quarters by mid 20s. Some of these sources don't give an age, while the statistics such as about 1 in 5 Australians will suffer from a mental illness and 10 to 20% of children and adolescents worldwide will suffer from a mental illness. Using the information from these sources prove that teenagers and young adults are the most common age group to begin to suffer from a mental illness. As previously discussed, mental illnesses usually arise in teens to mid 20s meaning that most, if not all, mental illnesses can affect students. Some of the most common mental health problems seen in students are depression, attention deficit disorder, anxiety, autism, obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, Tourette syndrome, opposition defiance disorder, conduct disorder, substance and eating disorders. In Oregon, USA, suicide was the second highest cause of death for teens aged 10 to 24, and Wisconsin's teen suicide rate was one of the highest in the USA. 70% of Australian students in a survey identified that their mental health is fair or low. In a survey conducted by the Suicide Prevention Centre in USA, students identified the following mental health issues as negatively impacting their performance for a year. Stress, 30%, anxiety, 22%, sleep difficulties, 20%, depression, 14%. There are many things that schools do to help students suffering from mental illness disorders or having low mental health. Most schools offer counsellors, psychologists and social workers. Schools can also offer teacher aids, student aids and learning development classrooms. Some mental health issues teachers can see are things like depression and anxiety, which are seen through students who sleep during class, seem tearful, cry throughout the day or seem sad. They may also skip days because of fear to leave their comfort zone. ADHD is quite noticeable in students' behaviours. They are high in energy and find it hard to sit still or stay focused on, on tasks. They may find it hard to stay in their seat and may roam around the classroom. Some things are less obvious, like eating disorders. Although a student with an eating disorder may find it very um, difficult learning, teachers can also look, look for students being withdrawn or isolated um, weight loss or trying to cover up their weight loss with baggy clothing. Substance abuse can exhibit noticeable behaviours including slurred words, staggered walking, uh, falling asleep or hyperactivity. 
Teachers can educate themselves and others on the symptoms of mental issues, provide a safe environment, encourage good health, and help students access mental health resources. Teachers can create awareness and work with students and their families to ensure students get the best help possible. Teachers can help students by creating accommodations for them. Things listed on the Australian Disability Clearing House on Education and Training website state that anxiety is common among students with psychiatric disabilities. Severe anxiety may reduce concentration, distort perception, and interfere with the learning process. Students who are anxious about workload may benefit from tailored reading lists with some guidance to key texts. You might allow work to be completed on an in-depth study of a few selected texts rather than a broad study of many. It may be helpful to provide an individual orientation to laboratory equipment or computers to minimize the anxiety likely if for some students in unfamiliar learning situations. Some students with a psychiatric or psychological disability may be oversensitive to what they perceive as criticism from others. They may prefer verbal to written feedback on assignments. In Oregon, USA, there is a bill legislating that schools can keep track of how many students take how many mental health days. And if a student takes too many mental health days, the students will be referred to the student counselor. This means that schools can catch students struggling before things get worse. As we are all aware of, mental illness has a myriad of negatives. It can cause suicides, get in the way of people's day-to-day -day lives. It can even make people not want to get out of bed or care for themselves, meaning they don't eat or making them sick. People can just cry, be prone to having more panic and anxiety attacks, even lowering their immune system, making them unable to physically care for themselves. It also affects people's friendships and relationships with family and friends, lowering their quality of life even more. As odd as it may sound, there are positives to mental illnesses. Even though they may not truly be seen as a positive thing, serious mental illnesses and mental health issues is something to see the doctor about. Uh, but if it's nothing too serious, then there are positives to it. Particular strengths come from differently wired brains. Neuroscience can explain to why mildly to moderately mentally ill people are likely to be more creative and have a more creative output. Mental illnesses occurs when strong emotions occur, but can also be caused through genetic vulnerability. They can cause many things like anxiety, panic attacks, and more, including affecting people physically. The most affected age group is people around the teenage to early 20s age group, meaning that uh, students are normally affected the most. Many to most of mental illnesses can affect students as that is the time people have mental illnesses and mental health issues. They can affect students badly, making them not want to go to school because of fear and lowering their quality of life. Schools do a lot to try and help students. They have school counsellors, psychologists and social workers, while other schools offer more. There are many negatives on mental illness and mental health issues. They can cause suicide, lower people's life and happiness and relations with family, but there are positives to mental illnesses. If not severe, they can make people creative and give them a more creative output. In a time of sadness, what can we do? I can recommend something. As said earlier, Oregon USA has something where students can take mental health days. If they take too many, students get recommended to the school counselor so they can stop anything before it's too late. Something like this in every school would be phenomenal. It wouldn't instantly show an improvement in schools, but over time we will be able to see an overall wellness in schools. So having mental health days for students is the best recommendation I can offer.